night, peering through the veil of darkness, the paranormal, spiritual, and comedic abound. Welcome to the Richard Spazoff Show. Hello, everyone. Uh, my voice today, I tell you, it's cold in Escondido. I mean, how cold could it get? It's not exactly the uh, Antarctic. Uh, sometimes it feels like that, though. Anyways, welcome to the Richard Spassoff Show. This is brought to you by Audible. And you can find us on our website on the PsychicMediumSpassoffShow.com. Also, the Richard Spassoff Podcast is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts available for Android and coming soon, iDevices. To get all the great stuff from the Richard Spassoff Show and more, please check out the HCUniversalNetwork.com. Also, I'd like to give a big thank you to Talk Stream Live uh, for putting us aboard their website. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Bill. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out, Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer, S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Let's get on with our show. Uh, coming up, we have an interview that we did with Joseph Van Peek, and it's a little tale, well, a true tale, about a vampire that we met in a bar. You, you never, never know, know who you're, you're going, going to meet. meet. Spain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, but it looks like it may fall here in this pretty soon. <laughs> it's a pretty murky day. Pretty murky day. Uh, well, you never guessed that you would ever, ever be back on the Richard Spassoff show again. Well, that's been about Well, we, <laughs> we always have our goals, but sometimes we don't meet them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, good friend. You can tell how much he loves me, but we do have a paranormal story to share with them, right? With our audience. Oh, there you go. Well, by gosh, uh, life with you around you is kind of a paranormal experience in itself. <laughs> well, tell me about that time we met that lady in the bar and who she claimed she was. Oh, yeah. We were in uh, downtown San Diego. I think we were in the gas lamp quarter. And um, we were at uh, uh, that hootenanny place down there, right there on the 4th Street or whatever. And we... Apparently, the, uh, the the management, had this lady came in, they thought she was panhandling or something. Anyway, she was tall and slender, dressed all in black, uh, jet black, and kind of flowing stuff. And anyway, they put her out to uh, ask her to leave. So we, uh, I guess, were going to some other place. We went outside. Well, wait, 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 because before, before we... Uh... We left. She came in the bar and came up to me. I mean, out of all the people, and I saw her yeah. eyes spinning. I could have sworn they were making me yeah. lightheaded. And then she asked me if she could have some of our blood. She was like a queen vampire trying to stop uh, her thirst for blood, right? Yes, yes. Some story like that. That was right before the. Uh gentleman in charge <laughs> kind of asked her to leave panhandling uh, apparently, yeah apparently yeah she <laughs> apparently he didn't have any blood to spare and uh that's one of the few instances where i ever saw anybody usually people ask for spare change or you know booze or something like that but 
in this case, or food, but in this case, she just wanted some blood, but I wasn't long on that at the time. But anyway, we got back outside, and she was there. Uh, didn't we? We encountered her back out on the sidewalk, and mm-hmm. we're walking up. I think that's when I heard her say that she was a vampire, and you know, you know, the only real vampires I've ever seen were like, you know, Bela Lugosi and stuff like that in the movies. I, I never saw one in real life, actually, until that, uh, till that evening. I, I didn't know they actually existed. You know, I always thought that Walking Dead stuff was just science fiction. Well, you got to say, this woman was not dumb. She had a, a aura about her that was scary, don't you think? Yes, yes, she... She might have been dangerous. There's just no telling, you know. And uh, I, Lon Chaney wasn't anywhere where I could get a hold of him. So I, I thought maybe. Uh, I mean, remember he was the Wolf Man. Well, I figured this might be the Wolf Woman. I think the moon was getting close, pretty close to its full stage at the time, and you just never know what comes out of the woodwork. But this gal is pretty strange. Um, I, I like I say I. Luckily, you know, I think I had something with a high collar on, I think, when I was exactly we but, down there. But the evening didn't end on a good note because we were walking home and we saw this body in a bag, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a dead guy there, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. Inside what, like a trash bag? Something like that, yeah, yeah. He was wrapped up in like this queen or something like that. I was like, oh boy. I think we better walk a little more briskly. So so the vampire might have gotten a hold of him. I don't know, but uh, we made our way back to our car and uh, kind of skedaddled. <laughs> well, you know, that's, just, that's a true story. I know. You... Yeah, actually, no, it, it, it certainly is, yeah. That's uh, about as close to that sort of paranormal activity as I want to get. I just, like I say, it, you know, I had some problems with anemia a couple years back and stuff, and, I really don't have any spare blood to donate, so I just uh, I've got to steer clear of those vampires. Yeah, the, the wolf man. <laughs> that lady and the wolf man will have to you know have to go somewhere else. Maybe uh, maybe Transylvania. I hear they've got a theme park uh, uh, over there in um, in uh, Transylvania, which of course is in uh, modern day Romania. They have something a theme park, you know, like the. Here we have Dollywood and Disneyland and all that stuff. Well, they have something over there called Dracula Land. Oh, great. I guess that's for real. Uh, I guess they he was their most famous guy that came from that part of the world, you know, the old Count Dracula. So <laughs> they have a theme park, I mean, I guess, where, you know, there's vampires and stuff around. I've never gotten to that part of the world, and I don't know if I'll get there in my lifetime, but, you know, it makes a good story. And who I knows what's real? Mm, I don't know. Even the real vampire, what was his name again? The the one in the eighteen hundreds. Oh, are you, are you talking about Count Dracula? Yeah, yeah. I Brand forgot. Stoker. Yes, yes. But, but now keep in mind, you know, Bela Lugosi, notwithstanding. Now he was, of course, he's a legendary character. But the character, the Dracula character in Bram Stoker's book, yeah, that's from about eighteen ninety five. That is fiction. You know, he based it on legends of stuff yes. from over in that part of the world. But much like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you know, that is fiction, technically. The, he didn't base that on any real-life experiences or anything. So we don't know if there really are Draculas out there or not. But it's just uh, we know that that count lived in Romania a long time ago, in, in Transylvania. But, you know, he may have just been some eccentric guy that collected blood. We don't know. Not only that, but how about all the bodies that he speared and put heads on his driveway? I mean, he wasn't exactly yeah. your uh, landscape decorator. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think he had any real gifts there. Yeah, that's right. They called him the Impaler. Yeah. But, Ooh. Uh, yeah, I know that must have stung all right. But that's back in the bad old days. Now, as far as how and why he turned into a bat, see... That may have been something that Bram, Bram Stoker came up with. I'm not sure if there's any foundation for that legend or not. But I guess the, the deal was they thought old Vlad over in Transylvania that at nighttime he went out hunting as a bat. I, <laughs> the idea of people turning into various kinds of animals, kind of, I find that kind of disturbing. I think you know, my dog is comfortable staying a dog, and I'm comfortable staying a human. So 
yep. I think we're just going to leave things the way they are. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to have you here today. I'm glad you had some time to come on. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's uh, always, uh, always. It doesn't have to be Halloween. Always time for a good story about some uh, some oddball thing. Yeah, you remember the time that we were up at my ranch and uh, I took some pictures and. Uh, I was taking pictures of the, my dogs and stuff that were up there. This is when my mom, mother was still living up there. But I took a picture across the, the uh, mesa out there towards the palm trees. And then remember later when we had the prints develop, there's a little cloud there in the middle of the, of the mesa that wasn't visible when I took the picture. And you can see it's not a double exposure. You can see the, the dog, Remus, the Springer Spaniel, behind it. You know, you can see part of, you can see him posed in the picture and the palm tree and whatever this thing is. It looked almost like Casper or something. Strange. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes there are things that uh, you can, uh, that a camera will pick up because of the very, very fast lens, you know, that you can't see um, with your naked eye. Anyway, I have to go. I'm okay. Summoned. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Joseph Van Peek for that very interesting story. I would like to end this uh, podcast with something on the lighter side. This is a little bit of a comedy tale. It's a true story uh, about me being a bus driver. And Brendan Pranowitz was with me during this interview. Here it is. So... I mentioned that my worst job was being a lifeguard. Richard, believe it or not, has a more um, terrifying story. Believe it or not, this guy has a, a weirder story than me. How can that be? <laughs> weirdest uh, job you ever had. Okay, this job was like a, a job from hell. Mm. I'll tell you, I mean, I used to drive a bus for the Navy, the Marines, and pick them up on base and drive them to some other place, right? That, that's usually what you do with a bus. <laughs> exactly. When you're a bus driver, it's like point, point A to point B. Okay, and, and the city gives you like a route to follow, correct? I would hope so. Okay, in my case, I never followed that route. That makes sense. Okay, I mean, uh, excluding the time that I accidentally ran over a car, that doesn't sound physically possible. Like <laughs> it was nighttime and I couldn't see. And this I'm talking about. Did you, right now they're going to bring up charges did, after all these years. Yeah. <laughs> Do you it's cannot, this guy. You cannot physically run over a car without messing up the bus. I mean, I'm not going to say where or when, but it was in L.A. Oh, okay. Even though I drove the bus in San Diego. That this story has a lot of holes in it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about something we can talk about. Okay. Okay, I was one time I got on the bus and uh, my bus, I was driving. It. Okay, and, and I, I was doing pencil interviews on the outside on the Marine base. You know, like when you hold up your pencil and talk to people and interview them. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> You've done many of those, right? <laughs> sure. Okay, so one night this one guy stole something from somebody. Hmm. And they told me, go get him, go chase him. I had 40 people on my bus, a full bus. Mm -hmm. I got off of the Marine base. And here we are going through a neighborhood at 50 miles per hour. That's fast for a bus. Yes, a little I, too fast. I think that's faster than any San Diego bus has ever driven. I mean, I was driving over somebody's yard. It was scary. I had two Marines in there that were protecting me against being beaten up by the other 40 people. Oh, wow. You know, every time I take a bus in San Diego, it takes me like two hours to get down the street. So I think we need more bus drivers in San Diego like Richard. He's driving 55, driving through people's yards. He cares about getting you to where you're going to go. I'll get you there. Out of retirement, Richard. Just like to say good night and God bless everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Richard Spazoff Show. For more episodes and information, join us online at PsychicMediumSpazoffShow.com or catch the show on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. The Richard Spazoff Show is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. 
For more great content and shows, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com or download our free HC Universal Network podcast app from your favorite device market. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And until next time, keep watching on the dark darkness. Dark, 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 dark.